Political Economy of Sectarianism and Coexistence Why do we look for the roots of sectarianism and coexistence in the fields of industrial, commercial, and infrastructural development? Because to understand sectarianism, we have to go to its material roots. Ibn Khaldun, Adam Smith, David Ricardo, Karl Marx, and Antonio Gramsci agree that the economic and commercial sectors strongly influence politics, culture, and religion. But isn't this approach one-sided and simplistic? Aren't conflicts more an expression of people's values than their economic interests? Let us go back to the ownership of the means of production. Simply put, political economy focuses on who owns industrial and commercial wealth and how they develop it. Technological progress plays a key role. For instance, in the Middle Ages, mining and sailing advancement led to the introduction of commercial incorporation to the introduction of corporate capitalism. This already happened in 1347 in the Swedish copper industry. It was vital for the manufacturing of cannons. In 1600, the Dutch and English established chartered companies promoting colonial expansion based on the corporate model. Thus, the introduction of early corporate capitalism and European domination of the Global South go hand in hand. Aristotle saw that the ownership of private property enhances responsibility and freedom. Later on, Ibn Khaldun argued that private ownership of the means of production was essential for the survival of a prosperous society. He claimed that state interference would destroy civilizations. Economic and technological development are both gradual and revolutionary. Wise leaders respond to change over time by introducing political reforms. Breakthrough technologies alter society and lead to revolutions, like in America in 1776 or in France in 1789. The three industrial revolutions of 1760, 1850, and 1950 transformed the global economy, our political systems, and society in general. The link between politics and the economy shows that crises are man-made. If they can be constructed, they can be deconstructed and put back together again to make a better world. What does this mean for Lebanon? In the 19th century, the opening of the Lebanese economy to global markets changed the country forever. The expansion of the port of Beirut and the completion of the highway to Damascus reduced travel time significantly. This transformed social and confessional relations in the region. Beirut's location on the Mediterranean was linked to its key role as a transportation hub, a center for financial services, education, and healthcare. The current crises throughout West Asia are rooted in economic and infrastructural transformations, including the following. The impact of the digital, third industrial revolution, integrating Lebanon into the oil and natural gas exploitation grids, the introduction of intersectional, diversity, and equality demands into key economic sectors such as financial services, extractive industries, or media and advertising. Lebanon's unique location promotes debate. Should social justice be based on charity or on the rights of the oppressed and marginalized? For example, people with disabilities are now experiencing an erosion of their rights to education, mobility, recreation, healthcare, and employment. These are the contours of the current social struggles. And on the global scale, the digital revolution linked diaspora communities to their homelands, Many activists are working from abroad to advance coexistence in areas like fair trade farming, electoral reform, freedom of expression, and sustainable tourism.